a beautiful thing It grows to the quiver of a fife that sings I can take it with the wave of my hand And place it upon my music stand Such a beautiful thing Such a beautiful thing First sermon of the new year. Woohoo! Okay, the title of my talk today, Another New Year is Dawning. So, A Course of Miracles does have some words and some teaching to say about the end of the year, the completion of the year, and the new year that is starting. At the end of the year, we had this, it said, our use for words is almost over now. Yet in the final days of this one year together, you and I, we found a single purpose that we share. So um, I felt that this year as, um, as the year was uh, finishing. I felt that I had uh, not as much to say and I was just sitting in the gratitude of being in A Course of Miracles student, having this profound purpose in my life, and knowing that I had done my best. <clears throat> you know, I had done my best throughout the year, stayed focused on the teaching as best I could, did my best to share the love and the light that I could, but also to be authentic, and there wasn't much else to say besides that. Um, and then it has, of course, has this to say about the beginning of the year. It says, so will the year begin in joy and freedom. There is much to do, and we have been long delayed. Accept the holy instant as this year is born, and take your place, so long left unfulfilled in the great awakening. Make this year different by making it all the same. So we begin the year, we're to focus on joy. We just got through the holiday season, so hopefully we still have a little joy around. Uh, and freedom, freedom is a challenging concept right now, but we're all here. We were all free to join the gathering today. So we focus on the joy and the freedom and we focus on joy and freedom because there is a lot that Jesus through the Course and the Holy Spirit have for us to do in the year ahead. And as he says here, there is much to do and we have been long delayed. So we may have done our best in the previous year and there is a lot that we still have to do and it's time to get on doing it because we have a place to fill in the Great Awakening. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've talked about the Great Awakening a lot. The Great Awakening was this, uh, it's, it's a known movement that was around in the 1700s and 1800s. And it was a spiritual revivalist movement uh, where spirituality was put back into the hands of the people taken necessarily out of the hands of the clergy and given to the everyday person. And the Course in Miracles tells us that that's our job. We're still part of that movement, that great awakening movement. We, we awaken. Uh, we don't put transformation, spiritual transformation into the hands of the priesthood or the elite we embrace it as something that we all have access to. And certainly what else does A Course in Miracles teach? We all have access to the miracles, to the transformations, to the healings. And that great awakening is what we are here to live, to demonstrate, to share, and to promote. And we have a lot of it to do here in the new year. Now this whole old year, previous year, new year, you know, it's all really arbitrary. You know, in essence, it's all just the 
eternal now moment and you know one now moment is essentially just the same as any other now moment of course says time is a trick a sleight of hand a vast illusion in which figures come and go as if by magic. I always like that particular quote about time because it's in lesson number 158, which is my birthday lesson. So time is indeed a trick. This idea of a previous year in a new year is really not real. Uh, it's just some magic trick we play on ourselves. And of Course in Miracles also says, you know, we've given everything we see all the meaning that it has for us. So the old year, the new year, whatever meaning we give to that is just meaning we're giving to it. There isn't any intrinsic meaning in the years themselves. So we know all that. You know, these lofty ideas about time. You know, there's these spirit, the ones that reflect spiritual truths. We know that. But how practical are they? And A Course in Miracles tells us that it does want us to focus on the practical. It does give us the lofty ideas to think about and to orient ourselves toward. But it gives us the practical as well. And it does say this about time too. And it tells us how to relate maybe to the lofty ideas. It says, yet yeah, what meaning can the words convey to those who count the hours still and rise and work and go to sleep by them? <coughs> so all these lofty ideas about time, yeah, they're, they're nice. But how practical can, there be, can they be for all of us who still, you know, function in a world and have to go to bed and get up and go to work. You know, they're, they're, they're nice in sentiment, but they don't have a lot of practical bearing. And it is the practical that A Course in Miracles is most concerned with. So I think it's really good to remember that, maybe good at this beginning of the year, uh, that the Course will give us many very wonderful high ideas. But that doesn't mean that in our day-to-day -day dealings that we come from those ideas all the time. The truth is we have to turn everything over to the Holy Spirit. And we have to come from guidance all the time. And the only way we're going to know how to relate to the world and bring as much of heaven into the world as we can possibly do is by turning everything over to the Holy Spirit and getting the guidance from the Holy Spirit on how to handle our day-to-day -day living. So I was thinking about the year that we were just finishing 2021 and last year at this time <coughs> I got I'm gonna need some water <clears throat> here we go good okay <clears throat> so um, in 2020 the end of 2020 we had the situation I don't know if y'all remember that the pandemic had had kind of dissipated and was hopefully over and everything was opening up and uh, you could go to restaurants again and businesses again and the movie theaters were opening up and everything seemed uh, to be getting back to normal a little bit and then there was some new wave of infection and cases surged and uh everything got shut down again over the holidays. And it was remarkably the same as what seemed to happen this year. Uh, there was, uh, in the end of 2021, the thought that the pandemic was largely over. <coughs> 
and uh, and uh, things were opening up again, and it was nice, and people were moving about, and there were less restrictions, but then the pandemic surged again. And so it seems like uh, we just had like a replay uh, of the end of the year in 2021, 2022 that we had in 2020, 2021. We were repeating the same scenario. <clears throat> Course in Miracles says, human living has indeed been needlessly wasted in repetition compulsions. <coughs> Obviously, I have a little repetition compulsion here. <laughs> um, so we're having a repetition compulsion here with the pandemic seeming to end and then suddenly seeming to come back. And that happened last year and it happened again this year. And as the quote said, that human living has indeed been needlessly wasted in repetition compulsion. So the compulsion to repeat the same situation over and over again. Now, ultimately, I think Course of Miracles is probably talking about the life and death thing that we, you know, that we have this repetition of feeling like we're born and we live and we then pass and we repeat that over and over again. And it's time to figure out how to put an end to all of that. The repetition. <coughs> so this year, at the end of 2021, when it had seemed like things were opening up, but then this new uh, wave of the pandemic struck, uh, I got it. So um, that's why I'm coughing. I am better, but uh, I am still working through the last stages of not being too well. And uh, this is probably the most I've tried to talk. And uh, it's, it's a little challenging. So the last few days, <coughs> I have been quite ill. So I've had a fever. I had body aches. I had chills. I was nauseous. I was extremely fatigued. And, uh, you know, uh, it was it was a challenging time. I, you know, my fever got up to about 102.2. That was, I think, the highest I had. I registered it. Uh, and I felt pretty miserable. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to say that I was better yesterday and that I'm better today. So I'm definitely on the mend, so that's a really good thing. Um, and A Course in Miracles tells us, it's something that I, you know, have repeated often. It says, do not despair then because of limitations. It is your function to escape from them but not to be without them. If you would be heard by those who suffer, you must speak their language. If you would be saviors, you must understand what needs to be escaped. <coughs> so, we don't despair when these things happen. And, uh, and we don't have to be embarrassed by it. So, I mean, I had thoughts as we were coming up to this talk that I was scheduled to give to uh, see if somebody else could give the talk because I wasn't feeling well. And I asked for guidance, which is what one always does. And the guidance I got was, no, you give the talk. Uh, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just honest. It's just what's going on. And we're not to despair because of limitations that we, we may have. It's not our job to be without any of those things. It's our job to overcome those things. And it's actually by demonstrating our approach to it and our overcoming of it that we can 
maybe put forth a great teaching that would be a, a great teaching to just present myself in whatever state I am in and that I could give the talk maybe a little limited uh, give the best talk that I could <coughs> and so that's what I'm doing uh, honestly I am here and I am here honestly I'm showing up exactly who I am and I'm not gonna hide anything that is going on uh, and I never have actually Reverend Tony Ponticello has always pretty much been what you see is what you get uh, there's not anything particularly hidden you get to hear what is going on with me and what I am thinking about and actually it's been wonderful to get ready for the talk and to get ready for the Sunday gathering and I think it's been uh, part of what has helped me to feel better uh, maybe just really connecting to a divine purpose was very healing in and of itself um, there's also that passage in what I just read is like if you would be heard by those who suffer you must speak their language <coughs> If you would be saviors, you must understand what needs to be escaped. So that's about empathy. So if I'm going to have a message that is going to ever resonate with anybody who is in pain, they have to know that sometimes I'm in pain. That sometimes things on the surface aren't going all that great for me. And if I can show up and be me in the midst of all of that, then anybody can show up and be themselves in the midst of whatever they've got going on and that's part of the healing of it and it's a great thing that's actually a great learning that's why I mention it pretty much every week when we go through our healing list that the fact that those people are on the list is nothing for any of them to be ashamed about or fearful about or you know to feel less than in any way at all because they are manifesting something that it's not our job not to have those things it's our it's our task to overcome those things and then by our overcoming we teach that overcoming to the entire world and maybe that's the greatest message here on the new year this arbitrary moment in time that isn't really significant in any kind of real way but we make significant maybe 2022 at least for me will be a year where once again I affirm that I'm just gonna show up and present as me to the best of my ability and I'll allow other people to show up and present as themselves to the best of their ability and if they can show up and be unembarrassed and I can show up and be unembarrassed and then we're all healing together and wouldn't 2022 be a great year if we just all heal together that way just showing up as who we are with whatever little blemishes we may have and knowing that it's all okay that it's all just part of the divine plan so it gives us empathy you know on a practical level when I asked for guidance of the Holy Spirit about you know some shift in perception about not feeling well well as many of you know um, you know I'm not a person who got vaccinated so uh, I, I'm achieving natural immunity uh, as I get over whatever it is I'm getting over uh, I will have natural immunity and natural immunity is probably better than any immunity that you get from a vaccine <coughs> so in some ways this can be a great thing and I am getting over it and uh, you know a couple days ago I had a fever of 102 
and this morning my my temperature was just 99 something so you know it's, it's much lower and things are are really getting getting better so I also feel like I'm strengthening my natural immune system and that's a good thing and I trust and I have faith that these things happen and they're happening for a reason so they're happening to increase my empathy and they're happening to increase my immunity and that's all great Course in Miracles has this about sickness it says sickness is a way of demonstrating that you can be hurt it is a witness to your frailty your vulnerability and your extreme need to depend on external guidance the ego uses this as its best argument for your need for its guidance. It, the ego, dictates endless prescriptions for avoiding catastrophic outcomes. So, I have noticed the uh, tendency, especially when I tell other people that I'm not feeling well and that I'm sick, is everybody wants me to do this, that, or the other thing. And that's okay, that's fine. I, I know they're sharing the best of their love and support. But a lot of it is all based on of yourself, you don't know what to do, and you have to you have to go to the experts. And I'm not uh, at all opposed to going to an expert if I am guided to, but if I am not guided to, you know what I what I am strong about is following my own guidance. So my own guidance was that it's just a process I'm going through and uh, and there's a lot that's going to be gained by going through this process. And so it's going to be a good thing. <coughs> so another new year is dawning. And, uh, and I'm seeing it as hopefully a way of breaking through some of these repetition compulsions that we have been going on. And we've had quite a few of these repetition compulsions going on about the pandemic and uh, the coronavirus and whatever new variant it is. And I'm ready to let go of some of those and ready to do whatever Holy Spirit guides me to do to help in that process. And I'm also ready to deal with whatever gets thrown my way with as much honesty and equanimity and grace as I can. And to be a demonstration of that, that honesty, that equanimity, and that grace. So I ask you all to think of the talk today and think of Reverend Tony just being honestly himself, who he is, what's going on with him, and that he's handling being ill gracefully. And hopefully that will inspire you to be graceful when you're going through challenges in your own life. So thank you. That's my talk for today. a beautiful thing It grows to the quiver of a fife that sings I can take it with the wave of my hand And place it upon my music stand Such a beautiful thing Such a beautiful thing Marvelous show.